In today's video, we'll see how simple it is to set up global error handling in your ASP.NET application. Global error handling is extremely important. Any application should have it regardless of what your error handling approach is. If you're using the result pattern, if you're throwing exceptions, it doesn't matter. Any application will throw exceptions at some point and you must have global error handling set up. There are various approaches, but there's one specific approach that I like the best, and that's what I'm going to be presenting today. If for some reason you're not subscribed, then pause what you're doing, smash that subscribe button, and let's jump right in. Okay, so what we have at the moment is as follows. We have the create product and get product endpoint, and we have the create review, get review, and list review endpoints. Now, currently, we don't have any error handling set up. So if we create a review, and currently we don't have any products, then this sometime throughout the request execution will throw an exception. The default behavior in ASP.NET is that it just returns the exception to string. So we can see exactly where this threw the exception and that is over here. So we're trying to create a review, but there is no product corresponding to this product ID and that's why we're throwing an exception. Now returning the exception to string is great if you're just trying to debug and understand what's happening. You're working in a local environment, in development environment, whatever. But in production, of course, you don't want to return the exception to string. The exception can contain in it customer content, confidential details, implementation details that you don't want the client to know about. Also, in this specific case, we actually just want to return 404 to the client. But generally speaking, your application will throw exceptions and you need to know how to handle it. So let's go to the program CS and let's add global error handling. You can imagine this if you're not familiar with global error handling. You can imagine this as a try catch that surrounds the entire application. And when an exception is thrown, then it is caught in this global catch clause and you can decide how you want to return a response to the client. There are various approaches for adding global error handling, but we'll look at my specific favorite way to do it. This is true since ASP.NET 7. So if you're using .NET 7 and above, then you can use what I'm going to show you now. Let's create here a new extension method and let's call this add global error handling. And let's go over to the service collection extensions and over here, let's add the add global error handling. For now, all we're going to do here is to add the problem details. If you're not familiar with problem details, then this is just a specification for the format of the error response back to the client. It comes down to returning, not application JSON, but application slash problem JSON. And in the response content, then you'll have specific properties that if all backend services use this error response format, then the clients have a standardized way to parse the error response. So this line over here adds to the dependency injection IOC container the required services to format the response according to the problem detail specification. We can see this simply by rerunning the application. And I see I have an error where this is called error and not error. So let's run this again. So if we make a request now that throws an exception, then already we get a completely different response that follows the problem detail specification. We can see we have the problem JSON alongside the various other things corresponding to the problem detail specification. Plus we have here what's called an extension property that contains inside it the exception. So again, all we did was to add this line and this line added the required services to the dependency injection IOC container. And then the default ASP.NET middleware that uses these services said, okay, this service is configured, then let's go ahead and use the problem details response. But we actually want to use a different middleware altogether to handle the errors. For that, what we're going to do is over here, we're going to add a new extension method that will be use global error handling. This will be configured in the web application extensions and very similar to before, let's copy paste this method. Let's call this the use global error handling. And over here for now, we're only going to add one line which is the use exception handler. This will add a middleware to the request pipeline, which will catch the exception and re-execute it to a new route. 
So what we can do is as follows. We can see over here, error. This will add a middleware that will catch the exception and re-execute it to this given route. Meaning that now we can define an endpoint called slash error, which we can go ahead and configure how the error will be handled. But for now, since we aren't going to be customizing anything yet, I'm going to simply remove this and leave it with the default behavior. Now, if we make a request again, then I want you to notice that the response again is different because we're using a different middleware to handle the exception. The default middleware returns the exception to the client, but this middleware doesn't. All we get back is as follows. First of all, we're using the problem detail specification, which is great. And in the response content, then we only have the following three properties. Now you might think to yourself, why is this better than the previous response that had more details? And the answer is that privacy and security is a big deal. You want to make sure that you're not returning sensitive information to the client. The exception message may contain in it sensitive details and you don't want to return that to the client. So now we have the bare minimum that we need for global error handling. So what we did again is we added the add problem details method, which simply adds the required services to the dependency injection IOC container. Alongside this, we also have the use exception handler, which registers a new middleware, which will log the exception and return some error response to the client. But when something goes wrong, we don't only want to return these details, we also want to return some other details. For example, a trace ID, a correlation ID, the service version. There are various things that the client can use now when an error occurred to understand and debug what went wrong. To customize the problem details response back to the client, then we want to go back to the program CS where we're configuring the global error handling. And over here, we want to update the options. What we want to do over here is to customize the problem details. Now this is available, I'm pretty sure since .NET 7, and this makes our life much easier because what we can do is the following. Over here, we have a context. This is some problem details context that we can use. And this in it not only allows us to say problem details and we can add various extensions. We'll look at that in a minute. But also this context has in it the HTTP context, which of course gives us access to various other properties that we may need that are specific for this request. Now, the first thing I want to do is in the extensions, just to show you how this works. So if I just add here something random and I give it some value, this change alone updates the response to include this specific extension property with this value. So if we make a request again that throws an exception, then alongside the other properties, these properties are built in, like we said, but this added the following extension property. Now we can also add in it more complex things. So we can add, for example, over here, an object. We can have this be, let's say, error and something, something. And now if we make a request again, then we get the response, but we can put inside other objects as well, which means that we can customize the response, add whatever properties that we want. This is highly, highly configurable. Going back, to the default response that we had before where this contained the exception, then I'm sure you can imagine how it's implemented behind the scenes by the ASP.NET framework, where they simply put an extension property that contains the exception. Now, the single thing that we're going to add over here for now is the trace ID, because when something went wrong, we want a unique trace ID that uniquely identifies this request so we can gather the logs of this request and understand what went wrong. So I want us to go back to the program CS and where we call add global error handling. I want us to add over here a new property, which is trace ID. And this will equal the trace ID coming from the HTTP context. So what we can do is we can say context dot HTTP context. This will give us the HTTP context. And over here, we can access the trace identifier. This is a unique trace ID for this specific request that is populated by our beloved ASP.NET framework. And I'm sure you can see how simple it is where you want to add, let's say the service version, other various details. Then all you need to do is say service version and to fetch it from your environment variable 
or however you have it configured. The last thing I want us to do as part of this video is to go back to where we're adding the middleware and to add over here a route. Like we said, if we say error, then this will catch the exception as part of the middleware and will re-execute the request to this route, which means that if we say app.map and we specify the error route, then over here, we have an endpoint that will be invoked when an exception is thrown, meaning that we also have access to the various services in the dependency injection IOC container. We can do here many, many things. For now, I just wanna show you that this is actually invoked when an exception is thrown. So let's return over here, something like results. Okay, and let's say hello from error endpoint. And now when we make a request, then we get the response configured in that endpoint. Now, the reason why this is powerful is because we can now go to this singular place in our application and configure when an exception is thrown. Let's bring whatever services that we want from the dependency injection IOC container, switch on the exception type, whatever we want to do, log the details that are okay to log to the database depending on our specific use case and our privacy needs, whatever. We can do all of that in a singular place. Now, you may be asking yourself over here, how do I access the exception that was thrown? So let's take this entire thing, let's get rid of it, and let's say that we want to get the exception. To get the exception, we need to use the HTTP context. We can say HTTP context as so, this injects the HTTP context, and we can because this is just an endpoint where you can inject whatever service that you want. And now we can say HTTP context dot features dot get i exception handler feature and over here by accessing the error then we get hold of the exception now as you can see this entire get exception handler feature returns the exception handler feature as nullable meaning that for some reason in some unexpected scenario this may be null. If for some reason this happens, then we want to know about this. We want to log some details. We want to send some metrics. So let's say that if the exception is null, then over here, we are handling this unexpected case. Otherwise, we may have here different logic based on the exception type, for example. So let's say custom global error handling logic, which over here will return perhaps different responses based on the exception type, etc. And finally, in the base case, then again, we can say results.problem, and this will eventually return 500 to the client. So recapping on what we have, we added more or less eight lines of code. In the add global error handling method, we added the add problem details, which makes sure that we'll use the problem detail specification. Over here, we're customizing the response to contain in it an extension property called trace ID, and we're bringing the unique trace ID for this request via the HTTP context, which is available inside the problem details context. Other than this, we also added a middleware in the beginning of the request pipeline that is like a large try catch over the exceptions that may be thrown. If an error is thrown, then we reroute the request to the slash error route. We configured the slash error route over here. And what we're doing is we're taking the HTTP context, we're using it to access the exception that was thrown. And now we can add whatever custom global error handling logic that we want. Now, this solution is not complete yet because we still are missing to act in the correct way when an exception is thrown. So in the review service over here, of course, we don't want to simply throw an exception like this because this will result in 500. We still need to handle the error flow correctly in our application, which is exactly what we'll do in one of the future videos. So if you haven't yet, for some reason, even though I commanded you in the beginning of this video, if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe and I'll see you there.